Hey there folks, my name's Jake, and I've got a story for you that'll make your hair stand on end. It all went down on an RV trip with my buddies Mei Ling, Tyrone, Natasha, and Carlos. We thought it would be a blast cruising through the Tongass National Forest, but let me tell you, it turned into a nightmare real quick. We hit the road, the hum of the RV's engine, and the chatter of my friends making the perfect soundtrack for our adventure. We were excited, the Tongass stretching out around us like some untouched wilderness paradise. Little did we know, paradise had a dark side. As we rumbled along, the sun dipped below the horizon, and we realized we needed a pit stop. We pulled into a rest stop that seemed harmless enough. Trees surrounded us, their shadows dancing in the fading light. But things took a turn for the worse, when we noticed a beat-up truck parked nearby, with a couple of guys slumped against it, bottles in hand. Deciding it was best to keep to ourselves, we grabbed some snacks and huddled inside the RV. That's when we heard the unmistakable crunch of gravel outside. I peeked through the blinds and saw a fisherman stumbling towards us. His eyes were glazed over and the stench of alcohol hit us like a punch in the face. Trying to stay calm, I went outside to assess the situation. The guy reeking of booze mumbled something about needing a ride. I politely declined, but he got agitated, insisting we help him. That's when I noticed our RV's tires were looking a bit deflated. I began to worry. Tyrone, always the fixer-upper, offered to take a look. We popped the hood, and sure enough, the engine was fine, but the tires were another story. It seemed like someone had sabotaged them. We couldn't believe our luck, stranded in the middle of nowhere with a drunken fisherman on our tail. As we were debating our next move, the guy started getting aggressive. He demanded we give him a ride, waving a knife like it was no big deal. Panic set in. This wasn't the kind of adventure we signed up for. We locked ourselves inside the RV, but the guy wasn't backing down. With no cell service, we had to come up with a plan. Carlos remembered passing a gas station a few miles back, so we decided to make a run for it. We waited for the perfect moment and made a break for the van. The drunk fisherman stumbled after us, shouting obscenities. We raced to the gas station, praying it was open. Luckily it was, and we explained our situation to the attendant. He called the police while we caught our breath, watching the fisherman wander off into the night. The cops arrived, but the guy was long gone. The rest of our RV trip was spent repairing the tires and nervously glancing over our shoulders. We never did find out who sabotaged our vehicle or what that fisherman's deal was. But one thing's for sure, the Tongass National Forest holds secrets, and not all of them are friendly. So, if you ever find yourself on the road to Tongass, watch out for the drunken fisherman's rest stop. You never know what's lurking in the shadows. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more spine-chilling content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a bone-chilling upload. Join us if you dare. Just thought I'd share an experience from a few months back that still gives me chills. It all started when my buddies and I decided to embark on an RV trip to the Chuvash National Forest up in Alaska. We were seeking adventure, hoping to escape the monotony of our everyday lives. We hit the road, cruising through miles of breathtaking landscapes, winding roads, and dense forests. Everything seemed perfect until we reached this desolate stretch near a remote lake. The vibe changed instantly, the air grew colder, and the once lively chatter inside the RV turned to hushed whispers. As we drove deeper into the forest, the towering trees cast ominous shadows, and the silence was deafening. We stumbled upon an abandoned cabin by the lake and decided to spend the night, thinking it would add a touch of excitement to our journey. Little did we know what we were getting ourselves into. The night settled in, and we gathered around a flickering campfire. That's when we first noticed distant footsteps echoing through the stillness. We dismissed it as our imagination playing tricks, but the unease lingered. Our laughter echoed into the darkness, and suddenly, the forest seemed to absorb every sound. Around midnight, we were startled by a distant noise, like the creaking of an old door. We exchanged nervous glances, trying to convince ourselves it was just the wind. But then, shadows emerged from the trees, figures wearing eerie masks that seemed to blend seamlessly with the darkness. These masked intruders silently surrounded our camp. Panic set in as we realized they were professionals, well-coordinated and methodical. They weren't there for a casual scare. They were there for something more sinister. 
One of them stepped forward, a chilling smile visible through the mask. He held up a finger to his lips, signaling for silence. My heart raced as they systematically ransacked our RV, taking valuables without making a sound. It was as if we were trapped in a waking nightmare. The leader, his eyes hidden behind the mask, approached me. He whispered, not a word. If you breathe a sound, your fate will be far worse. Fear paralyzed me, and I watched helplessly as they stripped us of our belongings, leaving us with nothing but the cold night and the echoes of their footsteps. As quickly as they came, the masked gang vanished into the darkness. We huddled together, still and silent, for what felt like an eternity. Eventually, we gathered the courage to contact the police, who arrived with skepticism but left with solemn expressions after assessing the scene. What haunts me the most is the realization that we were not alone in the Chuvash National Forest. There's a masked gang, experts in theft, lurking in the shadows, and the forest, once a symbol of natural beauty, now holds a darker secret, a place where silence is a weapon and shadows are accomplices in a crime that leaves victims scarred long after the thieves disappear into the night. I still get chills when I think about the RV trip my buddies and I took last summer. We decided to escape the city chaos and immerse ourselves in the serenity of nature. Our destination was a secluded forest campsite surrounded by mountains and waterfalls, a place known only to the most adventurous. As we parked our RV in the heart of the woods, excitement filled the air. The towering trees whispered secrets of the untamed wilderness, and the distant sound of a waterfall set the perfect backdrop for our camping adventure. Little did we know, the tranquility of nature would soon give way to an experience that would haunt us forever. The first few days were filled with laughter, hiking, and exploring the hidden gems of the forest. We felt like we were in a different world, disconnected from the hustle and bustle of our daily lives. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, we gathered around the campfire, sharing stories and relishing the warmth it provided. That night, as we settled into our RVs, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. At first, I dismissed it as paranoia, a side effect of being deep in the wilderness. However, as the night wore on, the Unisa grew. On the third night, things took a bizarre turn. We heard faint footsteps outside our RV, but whenever we peered through the windows, there was nothing, just the dark expanse of the forest. We laughed it off, attributing it to wild animals or maybe even our imagination playing tricks on us. Little did we realize that our laughter would soon be replaced by sheer terror. As the days passed, the sense of being observed intensified, shadows danced at the edge of our campsite and strange noises echoed through the trees. The camaraderie we once felt turned into anxiety, each of us wondering if the others were experiencing the same eerie phenomenon. Then, on the fifth night, it happened. I woke up to a tapping sound on the RV window. My heart pounded in my chest as I cautiously approached the source. Through the thin curtain, I glimpsed a silhouette, a figure cloaked in darkness, a stranger, standing just beyond the reach of our feeble campfire. My mind raced, grappling with fear and confusion. Who was this person, and why were they watching us in the dead of night? I mustered the courage to wake my friends, and we decided to confront the intruder. But as we flung open the RV door, the stranger vanished into the shadows. No footsteps, no trace. It was as if they were never there. Panic set in as we realized the gravity of the situation. Someone had been silently observing our every move, a mysterious presence that had infiltrated our sanctuary. With trembling hands, we packed up our camp and left the forest at sunrise. The once inviting woods now felt like a malevolent entity, and the memory of the silent observer haunted us on the drive back home. To this day, I can't shake off the feeling of being watched. The RV trip was meant to be an escape, a chance to reconnect with nature, but it became a harrowing experience that left us questioning the thin line between the known and the unknown. The forest, once a place of beauty, now lingers in my nightmares as the haunting grounds of the silent observer.